cheers to another trip. Where are we going? Oh, where are we going? Back to Italy, Croatia, Greece, England, Wales, Scotland, Belgium, Amsterdam. Here we come. For 55 days, Ruth and I are embarking on an epic European journey, traveling to eight countries, six of which are new for us. Our trip takes us from the whitewashed towns of southern Italy to the dramatic coastline of Croatia. And from the historical center of Athens to the sun-drenched islands of southern Greece. We then head north to the pastoral countryside of England and to Scotland before having to cut our trip short. For while we understood the risks of traveling this time of year, we were forced to change our trip due to the hurricane that was heading right for our home in Florida. Travel doesn't always go right, but when it does, it is one of the most enriching experiences one can have. travel day of three hours to Newark, seven hour layover, and then a 10 hour or so flight to Rome. So we'll be arriving in Rome in the morning, and then we have a three hour drive down to a B and b that we just picked out. So hopefully get some rest and then hit the ground running the next day. So super excited to go and planes here, no delays yet, so Bags are hopefully going to be on board soon, so we'll be off and away. First leg was a short flight up to Newark. It started off as a beautiful day to fly. However, as we came in for our landing, we could tell the weather was turning. After the planing, we made our way to the United Club Lounge, where we watched a strong front roll in, as well as catch the Liverpool Man U game with some beers. The storm eventually moved out, but the damage was done, as we were delayed by two hours. The glamour of travel? Yep, exactly. We quickly boarded, and we're off to Rome. After landing, we picked up our rental car for the three-hour drive south. Knowing we would be tired, we had picked a small town halfway to Puglia called Benevento. We checked into our Airbnb and grabbed a quick pizza dinner, followed by a walk around town afterwards. Cute, nothing special, but perfect for a quick overnight stay. Next morning, we woke early and hit the road to our first stop, the ancient city of Matera. More recently known for being featured in James Bond's No Time to Die. The city of Matera is believed to have been settled since the Paleolithic period, 10th millennium BC, making it potentially one of the oldest continually inhabited settlements in the world.
We spent several hours wandering around and getting lost in the Sassy di Matera. Until the late 1980s, the Sassi was still considered an area of poverty since its dwellings were, and in most cases still are, uninhabitable and dangerous. Recently, there has been a push to become more tourism oriented and it has promoted the regeneration of the Sassi as a picturesque tourist attraction with the aid of the Italian government, UNESCO, and Hollywood. There are so many of these little nooks and crannies you can just step into and be like in the middle and underneath the city. It's really, really kind of cool. We made our way down the hill to the Tibetano del Gravina suspension bridge. And despite a fear of heights, Ruth made it across. The bridge felt right out of Indiana Jones. It was not as scary as it usually would have been for me. <laughs> so I'm very proud of myself. I did it and it was pretty easy. So, yay. High five. After conquering the bridge, we headed up to a viewpoint with spectacular views of the Sassy and explored some ancient cave dwellings. as far as I'm gonna go. I can smell it. The Italian region of Puglia forms the heel of the Italian boot and has been on our trip list for quite a while. For the next four nights, we were staying just outside the town of Albero Bello, famous for its unique dome homes called Trulli. And as we got closer, we started to spot them everywhere. Coming to the land of Truly, we felt like we had to stay in one. This is so cool and unique. We jumped back in the car for the short drive to the town of Albero Bello, the city famous for its truly. They're like little hobbit houses, white little hobbit houses. We are now Barro Bello and these are the cutest little dome homes and fortunately I don't think it's more of like a real town anymore. It's more like a tourist town with all of these rental, these are all for rent. So you can stay in one of these. I mean this is the most crowded, more than Matera I think. While areas were crowded, we managed to find quiet lanes and see truly not yet gentrified. After wandering around and watching the sunset, we had built up quite an appetite. It was time for dinner. We found a restaurant that did local Puglian dishes, tapa style. It was so good. After a homemade breakfast using ingredients grown on the property, we hit the road heading towards the southernmost region of the heel, the Salento, to explore its dramatic coastline and the town of Otranto. Our first stop was the Grotta della Poesia, or Cave of Poetry. Carved out of the limestone cliffs, it is one of the most beautiful natural pools in the world. It's a pretty rough day today. I'm not going to get in the water down here. I don't think we're even allowed to make it. Pretty cool. You can walk right across to the land over right there. But all this whole area that seems to be inhabited, you can see a fort over in the background there. And people used to live in buildings, gathering cats, where people used to live.
first gelato of the trip. Delicious, except you gotta be fast because it's melting fast. We enjoyed exploring the town, from the narrow streets to the imposing castle and the grand squares. But it was Otranto's seafront that kept pulling us back to linger. Seeing the people in the water made us want to get in as well. Plus, it was so hot. The next day we explored the town of Lecce, known as the Florence of the South for its Baroque architecture. It is a city that seems to have a church around every corner. The city's sandstone streets are made for strolling, car free in its center with big and small squares revealing surprises, like a second century Roman amphitheater partially excavated and now used for cultural events and once helped 25,000 people before being buried and built on top of it. Or a band spontaneously playing in the central square of Santa Rosa. Nice to kind of wander around and get lost. Come back, Che. No, yeah. No. Cafe, yeah, La Cese. La Cese. Cafe La Cese. Cafe La Cese. Nice, refreshing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get an amaretto coffee without the alcohol. And as we finished our time in Lecce, we headed off to the beach. For dinner, we visited the town of Cisternino. Crowning a hill, it had epic views of the Itria Valley and dozens of quiet whitewashed lanes for exploring. After two years of pandemic restrictions, including during our trip to Italy six months earlier, it was great to see Italian piazzas brimming with life. While the dinner was a bit gimmicky and expensive, it still tasted good and fresh. After spending the last two days in the Salento region of Puglia, we turned our attention to the region surrounding the city of Bari. First up was the Instagrammer paradise of Polignano Amare. While it's easy to see why Instagrammers love it, for its natural beauty and uniqueness. It's also very crowded, and we were here at 10 a.m. It was cool swimming through the caves, knowing the town was right above us. Though we always had to look up in case of jumping cliff divers. Oh! Ow! Oh, there's 
and the side bird sliding on the rock. Mare, which is this gorgeous, picturesque, we like see the Instagram shots all the time. Beautiful. I'm so happy we went, but it was jammed with people. Rocky Beach, and you could just find your tiny little patch. Water was beautiful though, clear as anything, um, but the town was packed solid. I'm glad we went, I'm glad we went in the water, cooled down, um, but it was super crowded. We drove down the coast and stopped in the city of Monopoly. Out of all the towns we visited in the Puglia region, this was, I think, our favorite. It's a very real Italian town where laundry's hanging out to dry. Maybe we'll head to the beach, get in the water again, because it's hot. For our final day in Puglia, we had three more towns to visit. First up was the capital of the Puglia region, Bari. Located on the coast, Bari is a cross-section of modern and ancient Italy. With a bustling harbor full of cargo and ferries, you can also find Nana's hand-making Orchietta pasta in the back streets of the old town. One of the larger hill towns, Martina Franca was where we headed to for lunch. Despite its size, it was a great place to take it slow and have a lazy lunch on the main square, especially as the skies opened up. Okay, so which one would you order? I might go for either the Rolling Stone or the Beatles. Our final stop was the hilltop town of Astuni, Known as the White City, though every town we had visited was painted white, this medieval walled city was built without a plan, with streets, staircases, and alleyways creating a maze that confused a stream of invaders. From the Greeks, the Romans, the Goths, the Byzantines, the Normans, and now tourists. Whitewashed streets and quiet back alleys give way to busy squares and a vibe that felt just a little too hip. Mastuni, what do you think? It's a bit crazy. It's like a circus here. So many people, so crowded. Way more crowded than I thought it was going to be. 
I mean, there's just people everywhere. And everything looks like it's got massive lines. It's like Disneyland. And I feel like it's the hipster place. There were a lot of, when we were walking around, a lot of hipster bars. Yeah. Yeah. We spent the evening enjoying spritzes, a charcuterie board, and of course, gelato, before returning to our Trullo for one final night. Great five days in Puglia, and now we're back, heading back to Rome. We got about a six-hour drive, a couple of cappuccino stops, and lunch stop. Uh, but tonight, dinner in Rome, which is very fun and exciting. So, long drive, but uh, going to be worth it in the end. After dropping off the rental car, we had three tasks: to see as much of our Rome favorites as possible eat an amazing dinner, and have gelato. I've got four flavors of yumminess. Oh my God. Mm, so good. 